In part three, we talked about water, conserving water, and also in Waikiki when the infrastructure fell apart and there was no water. And it was the yachties in the marina that saved the day by unloading their water tanks to jugs and give them to the people that were visiting Hawaii. Now we've all faced that situation where we turn on the water, oh my God, it's gone. We don't have any water. So the question is, do you have any spare water in your place if EID can't deliver water to you? Now it may not happen, but it could. During the Board of Supervisors meeting the other day, I told, you know I own a boat, so I'll tell you two sea stories. I told these two stories at the Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, one involved um, a fellow named Tom who had a boat next to mine in Oakland, California. And Tom's boat was called Little Bit, and he used to be, in his younger days, he used to be a skipper of a mega yacht for the Bush family. Not the President Bush, but the Budweiser Bush. So Mr. Bush said, Tom, uh, we're going to go to the Bahamas. I'm taking the family and friends, and we're going to go there for a week. So get the boat ready. We'll be down there shortly. So Tom uh, gets the boat ready. They leave Fort Lauderdale. They're out there about 24 hours, and Tom goes to Mr. Bush, and he says, Mr. Bush, we're out of water. He says, Tom, what do you mean, we're out of water? We got 1,100 gallons. Sorry, sorry, boss, but we're out of water. You didn't fill up the tank, did you, Tom? You didn't, did you? I filled up the tanks, boss. Um, we're going to have to go back to Fort Lauderdale. OK, let's turn around so they get back to Fort Lauderdale, put in another 1,000 gallons of water, and leave for the Bahamas. Ah, you're, get, you're getting ahead of me, I can tell. They're out there the second day, and Tom goes to Mr. Bush, and he said, I'm sorry, we're out of water. Mr. Bush is dumbfounded. So uh, they take the boat back to Fort Lauderdale. Mr. Bush tells his guests and his family that uh, we're not going for, to the Bahamas on the boat and we'll have to reschedule to some other time. Someone on that boat, or maybe two or three people, had no idea what water con con uh, conservation was and they were using, between them, a thousand gallons of water a day. Now, can that happen in your household? It could. Who knows? Long hair and a long shower ah, makes for happy people. The other story relates to a time in which three of us left Opur in New Zealand. We're heading for Tonga. The other two boats were a little smaller than mine. They were, well, they were a little smaller. We're about a day out of uh, Tonga Tapu, and a terrible storm uh, blows in, comes right on the nose. The Baba 40 blows a through hull, and the Valiant 40, they can't take the pounding anymore. They turn left and go to Minerva Reef. I decide, well, I'm only a day out, uh, or just a few hours at most, uh, I'm going to slug it out. So I slugged it out, took 24 hours, got into Tonga Tapu, dropped the hook, and then thought about the people at Minerva Reef. The storm lasted two weeks. They were there for two weeks without, there's no water in Minerva Reef. So they spent two weeks rationing water in Minerva Reef. Now when you go to sea for a long time, you're only allowed a gallon and three quarters, gallon and a half a day. So you have to make do with that because it's the most valuable resource on that little world that you're living in, in the middle of the ocean. So I'm not saying you have to think about living that way, but now might be the time to start thinking a little bit about some water conservation that we talked about earlier, incineration toilets. And now the third thing is to get a 300 gallon, 200 gallon water container as a backup just in case you run into this kind of situation. So that ends part four, and we're looking forward to seeing you in part five. And remember, this is all about San Stinto over there.